Hey guys, Ms. Miklos here, and today we are learning about slope. And once again, this is an Algebra 1 concept, so it's going to be mostly review for you guys. Um, but our definition of slope is that slope is a characteristic of a line. It is a ratio of vertical to horizontal change. And that brings us into some things that you guys have learned about slope before. You guys probably remember that we usually use the letter M to represent slope. Um, one of the phrases that you guys have heard a ton in Algebra 1 is rise over run. You may have also done y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Another way we think of that is delta y over delta x. Delta is a Greek symbol. It looks like a triangle, and it represents change. If you learned standard form last year, you know that the slope is also thought of as the opposite of A over B. So these are some common things that we're going to be seeing in terms of slope. One of the first things that we're going to do with slope today is given two specific ordered pairs, we need to find what is the slope of the line that contains both of these ordered pairs. So we need to remember that slope, we're going to use y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Now, the key thing with this is it does not matter if I use this ordered pair as my first ordered pair or if I use this ordered pair as the first ordered pair. What does matter is if I decide that 6, and I'm going to label this x sub 1, if I decide that that's x sub 1, then y also has to be a sub 1. Okay, so I'm going to use the first ordered pair as 1 and our second one as 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and substitute in these values. So I have negative 4 minus 2, which we know is negative 6, over 3 minus 6, which is negative 3. I need to reduce this further, so our answer is 2. We know having a slope of 2 means we are going up 2 to the right 1. We could also think of it as going down 2 and to the left 1. Our second problem is very similar. This time our ordered pairs are 6, 2, and 6, 8. So I'm going to go ahead and write out our equation here, our formula. Now you guys don't have to write that every time. As soon as you have that memorized, you're fine. I also labeled all of the numbers in our ordered pairs. So I'm going to substitute in and go 2 minus 8 over 6 minus 6. So I get negative 6 over 0. Now, we have a problem here because we know we can never divide by zero, okay? And what this really tells us is that there is no change in the x value, which means it's a vertical line. We write this in one of two ways. I could either say that there is no slope, okay, so some books will write it like that, or we could also say that the slope is undefined. Now I normally use um, no slope in this class but both answers are correct we should know that they both represent the same thing. The other thing I want to point out is that if we looked at our original problem we might notice that our x values are exactly the same in the ordered pairs. If you notice that right away then I know that this has to be a vertical line, which means no slope or undefined. And you could go ahead and write that without doing any of that work. Okay, so the final example we're doing on this, 2, 5, and 7, negative 5. When I substitute in, I get 5 minus 5 over 7 minus 2. So I get 0 over 5. This time, there is no change in the y value, which would make this a horizontal line, and we would say m is equal to 0. Now, if we look back at the ordered pairs, this time we noticed the y values were exactly the same, so I could just write m equals 0 right away, and that would be totally fine. So there are only four different types of slope that we are going to be seeing. 
The first is a positive slope, which rises from left to right. The second is a negative slope, which falls from left to right. And this might seem super obvious, but the important thing, once we get to our next lecture and we're, we're graphing equations of lines, we need to know if the slope is positive, our line should look like this, where it's increasing from left to right. If our slope is negative, it is falling from left to right. So we often use that just to double check our work. The third and fourth types of slope, one is an x equals line, which is a vertical line. On an x equals line, we have no slope. Okay, it's just running straight up and down. A y equals line is a horizontal line, so it's running left and right. And a horizontal line has a slope of zero. The next characteristic we're going to learn about slope is something called steepness. Okay, the line with the slope of greater absolute value is steeper. And these problems are going to be important because a lot of the problems out of your book tonight um, are not just going to be simple like, okay, here are these two ordered pairs, what's the slope? You're going to have to do a little bit more work on them. So if we look at number four, we need to determine which of these lines is steeper. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to find the slope of the first line first. So I'm going to say m equals, and I'm going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I end up getting 1 over negative 2. Our second slope, I would do negative 3 minus negative 4 over 0 minus 3. So I end up getting negative 1 third as our value. Now, to figure out which line is actually steeper, I need to compare the absolute values of these two different lines. Okay, and if we look at this, the absolute value of negative one-half is one-half. The absolute value of negative one-third is one-third. So we would say one-half is greater than one-third. So our solution here would be that line one is steeper. Okay, so all we're doing here, we're finding our slope like we've done on previous problems and then comparing their absolute values and determining which of those two lines has a bigger absolute value and that is the steepest line. So the next topic I wanna to talk about is comparing parallel lines with perpendicular lines. Now, right away when you hear parallel and perpendicular, my guess is the geometry version of the definitions kind of pop into your head. And that would be that parallel lines never intersect and that perpendicular lines create a right angle. Just a reminder, parallel lines we often show with the two um, lines that look parallel to each other. And perpendicular lines, we use that upside down T. Um, so these are valid definitions, but the definitions we're going to be using are going to be that parallel lines always have the same slope and that perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. And what that means is that if I had something like 2, the opposite would make it negative and the reciprocal means I'm flipping my fraction, so that would be negative one-half. Okay, so two and negative one-half are opposite reciprocals. Negative one-third would be the opposite reciprocal of positive three. We could go on and on. Um, Two-fifths would be the opposite reciprocal of negative five-halves. So you guys can kind of see where I'm going with that. So what we're doing with this information, we need to determine are these two lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So in order to do that, we're going to have to find the slope of each of these two lines. So I'm going to start with line 1. So I have negative 3 minus 3 over 1 minus negative 1. So I have negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3. So let's think for a second. If these slopes are, are, if these lines are parallel to each other, 
the slope of line 2 would have to be negative 3. If these slopes are perpendicular to each other, these, the second slope would have to be positive 1 over 3. So if I get anything other than negative 3 or 1 third, then I'm going to see, say that these two lines are neither. So let's look at line 2. I have negative 1 minus 0 over 0 minus 3, so I get negative 1 over negative 3, which is positive 1 third. So if I'm comparing these two slopes, these are opposite reciprocals, so my answer is going to be that they are perpendicular to one another. Just a reminder, if this answer had been negative 3, we would have said parallel. If it had been any other number, we would have said neither. And we are going to end this lecture with your favorite type of problem, a word problem. Okay, so this is a old word problem um, from probably before you guys were born. The number of U.S. cell phone subscribers increased from 16 million in 93 to 44 million in 96. Find the average rate of change. I'm going to pause right there. That means we are finding the slope. Whenever we see average rate of change, it means slope. Okay, and then we're going to use that slope to estimate the number of subscribers in 1997. So the first thing that I'm going to look for is do we have ordered pairs? Because that's really what I need to find a slope. And I notice that we have 93, 16 million, and 96 was 44 million. So I'm going to use those really as our ordered pairs. To find the slope, we would say subscribers per year. So I'm going to go ahead, and since these are in millions, I'm just going to keep it 44 minus 16 and know that our final answer is going to be in millions, over 1996 minus 1993. And once again, if you added the 19, I would end up with the same output, so it doesn't matter. And I get 28 over 3. So just kind of to describe what this is telling us. It's saying subscribers, so 28 subscri million subscribers every three years. So if I convert that, and you know how much I hate mixed numbers, but I think this actually is an appropriate time to kind of have that. It's telling us that we have nine and one third million subscribers per year. So I'm going to write out that label. So that answered our very first question. Now it's going to ask us to use that to estimate the number of subscribers in 1997. Well, if I know the number of subscribers in 96, can't I just add the, aver the average rate of change to get what it is in 97? So I'm going to do 44 million plus 9 and 1 third million. So that would tell me 53 and a third million subscribers in 1997. Now, if this had been further down the line, we, we would have to kind of add in a multiple of 9 and 1 third, depending on how many years down the line we're looking. Okay, so this is an example of how we do see rate of change quite frequently in real life.